is working. So I'm gonna, we're doing a different format tonight. We don't have a PowerPoint. We wanna have a conversation about networking. And look at Carol, wow, no PowerPoint. How do you do this without a PowerPoint? I don't know, we'll see in a minute. So, <laughs> um, to introduce myself, I'm Tony Harris Taylor. I live in Houston, Texas. I am a sales and marketing coach and I love networking. Wasn't always that way. It was, uh, it took me hiring a sales and marketing coach, just like myself, um, 15 years ago to learn the strategies that we teach today. So um, I'm going to, we're going to share from our heart the strategies you, so hopefully you brought something to write with. Um, the strategies you need in order to build relationships to grow your business. And I met Tish Times in 2012 at a national networking uh, conference. And uh, it was in Dallas, I believe. And yeah. uh, we met there. We followed the strategies we're going to talk about. And now we have spoken at Tom Joyner's um, family reunion. Um, if you're not a brown person, you may not know about that or care, but Tom <laughs> Joyner is a international DJ and he has over 8 million listeners. He had, he retired last year, but he had over 8 million listeners and we were invited to speak on their event. So how did that happen? Right. And so Tish and I spoke together there. So we look like twins but we believe in collaboration and we don't believe in competition and that should be tip number one that you write down no competition only collaboration and when you find someone who's just like yourself it just magnifies who you are so i'm gonna let my co-host and friend and sister introduce herself and then we'll get back into the program Awesome. Well, I am really glad to be here to see some of you all again from last week and to see some of your new faces. It's a, a pleasure and an honor to be able to share with you all today. I have been in the networking space in some capacity for almost 20 years. I used to run a staffing company, so I say I've been in the business of connecting people for almost all of my career. Um, but in the last 10 years, I've been teaching networking and sales. And as Tony mentioned, we met connected, found so much synergy and have been doing things together in some way, shape or form um, since we met basically in some way, shape or form, as I said. Um, I am looking forward to our conversation today. We're definitely going to have a little bit more of an interactive type of presentation than we did last week. However, we are going to give you as much information as we can pack into the time that we have available. And I know um, we have a couple of topics we're gonna to talk about. I'm gonna let Tony get us started, but um, I'm looking forward to talking to each and every one of you all. So both of us are franchise owners for Network in Action, which is a, in, a, a national networking organization. And I was first. Uh, and it came to me and Network in Action is an organization um, in its referral network. And the intention is to bring business owners together to bring each other warm leads. And so when I met the founder who happens to be named Scott, is that you in the background there? Put your camera on. Let me see if that's you. Um, Scott said um, he wanted to grow the network inter uh, nationally. And I said, well, we can start with the state letter A. I know somebody in Arizona who's perfect for this. And then she became a NIA franchise owner. And then she said, Scott, how can I help you? He said, I want to grow. And he, she introduced, Tish introduced Kim O'Banion to uh, Network in Action. So she also is a networking um, specialist, and she brings business owners to help each other to grow. So my question, I like for this to be more of a question and answer than just us talking. Let's have some conversation around networking. So I'm going to ask the first question, and that's what's your biggest challenge when it comes to networking? And oh, you can unmute and just talk. <laughs> Introduce yourself, say your name, where you're from, your business, 
And then what's your biggest challenge? Somebody. No, no, talk one. We can't. Yeah, we can't hear everybody if you're talking at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll jump in there. So I'm Kim O'Bannon with Network in Action, Stellar Connections. Um, and follow up, I find, is the biggest challenge for myself and for the business owners that I work with, um, especially with, um, well, online and offline, but offline, obviously, it's a different dynamic when you're picking up business cards. What do you do with them versus now we're on Zoom and I find it even more challenging. Great, great comment. <laughs> Tish, you want to take that first? You know I do. <laughs> I know you do. That's why I'm follow-up like, specialist. Yeah. I'm sitting here like, I want to talk, I want to talk. So follow-up is the literal one thing that if we miss it, all of the work that we do at the front end will be literally for naught. Um, so I utilize a 12-step follow-up system. I won't go through all 12 steps tonight unless people ask me specific questions about it, but I will say this. The best way to follow up is to start in advance. That means when you put an event on your calendar, you put the time on your calendar to follow up as well. So let's just say we have this event today. When, if you are planning on meeting people who you don't know, which you are, right? then my advice would have been to say, okay, well, I have this event on Monday at four o'clock. So Tuesday from 10 to 12, I'm blocking off time just to do my follow-up work. That's step one. So we always think follow-up starts after the event. It actually starts before the event. Um, I'm gonna give you three steps. Unless you ask specific questions, I'll give you three steps because I got a lot more, but I don't wanna take up our, our entire time. The next thing would be to be very intentional with what you want to accomplish. Because the reason a lot of people, the, many times people won't follow up because they don't have a reason for calling and they don't want to sound salesy. They don't want to just call and just chat. They, they don't have a reason. So the reason might be, I'd love to invite you to the unstoppable drastic action conference that I heard about. We could probably go together. They have a buy one, get, be, get a second ticket for $60. We should get up together. So now I have a reason for calling Carol and saying, Carol, girl, did you hear about this conference? we should pair up and go together. So now Carol doesn't feel sold to, she feels blessed, right? Because I called to give her something instead of to ask something of her. And now we've developed a new relationship in which we can probably do business together later. The third thing is to not give up. And, um, and I know many of us will say, how many, of you, how many of you all will say, well, I've already called my contacts three times, five times, seven times. And it gets frustrating and you're just like, I'm over it. They don't want it and they'll call me when they're ready. Guess what? They won't. And it's not because they don't want, want what you have to offer so much as you're no longer at the top of their priority list because they've moved on, life has happened, they've cooked dinner, they've had an uh, argument with their husband, whatever, right? And so it's, it's, it is imperative for us to put them on our calendar in incremental time. So I might put them on for two days, then for two weeks, then I might put them on for two months, but nevertheless, until I know they're no longer a viable opportunity for me and I just can't give them what they need, I'm going to continue to reach out to them. I've gotten business two and three years after the first contact because of that follow-up system. And once again, that's a very small snippet, um, but it gives you an idea of how important follow-up is. And once again, if you ask any specific questions, I will be happy to address them. Tony? Well, I'd like to talk about how to follow up when you're uh, networking online. Mm -hmm. So if you open your chat, <laughs> open your chat now. Love it. <clears throat> you have to be prepared with who are you and how can people get in contact with you. So we're gonna use chat to put in our business card. So you guys enter your information now in the chat so that these people here who find you interesting can follow up. So while you're doing that, I'm going to talk about my follow up. So I am very good at follow up as well, but I do as much. I do what I can do so I don't have to follow up. Mm. What do I mean by that? You see that link in chat that says schedule your one to one at meetwithtonyharristaylor.com. I put that in every virtual event that I go to. If somebody finds me interesting, I say, click the link. 
find your 30 minute get to know you session with me. And then I don't have to track you down and you don't have to track me down. <laughs> right? So make it automated. Make it easy for people to schedule appointments so you can use Calendly, Time Trade. I use the CETA. Use a scheduler and ask people or tell people to schedule an appointment with you on the spot. Tony, I'm going to stop you one thing that because I want you to I want you to go deeper on this, but look at what I just did. I put my link in, but because it doesn't have the HTTPS, it's not clickable. So you have to make sure you put the entire link in. The first one I put in on purpose, you can see you can click it. But if you just put in www, someone might want to connect with you, but they can't click it on the spot and then they'll forget later. So I just wanted to make sure make that a point. Absolutely. So you have to take the time and type HTTPS colon slash slash www.meetwithtonyharristaylor.com. Now, when I hear what AD says she does, and that interests me, meaning that I just want to get to know her better. So when you network, you're not trying to sell on the spot. You're just trying to make a connection. So I hear what AD says she does. And now I really want to connect with AD. So in chat, I can either right click on her picture and hit chat. Or if you're on an iPad, you can open your, um, or on a phone, open participants, click on the person's name, and then next to it, it should be a chat. And then I'm going to send AD the exact same thing, but I'm going to say, I heard what you said. I want to connect with you. Here's my link. And then let her do it. Because the truth is, once you sign off or you leave an event, life gets busy and you forget or you stop, you don't follow up. And they don't follow up either. So you always want to give people a way to follow up easily before you leave the event. Any questions on that? Fortune's in the follow-up though, and that's not just the same. If you don't follow up, nothing's gonna happen and someone has to take the initiative. And now that you've had training with me and Tish, I'm hoping it's you. Yes. And it's okay. I call that asking for a date. So there's most live men and women here, but you know, ladies, I'm gonna talk to the ladies for a second, Roy and um, Howard. When we was a little younger and we was clubbing or going out to the party and Mr. Looked So Good, he, he saw us, called our eye across the room and he sashayed up to you, girl, girl, Jessica, you're so fine, girl. Can I talk to you? <laughs> You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, on the inside. Yeah. And so he buys you a drink. Y'all have a good conversation. He asks you for the number. You gladly uh -huh. give it to him. And you know, nowadays it's a little different. Ladies call first. But you know, we, we next day we expect him to call. We had a connection, right? Next day, no call. Hmm. Okay, he's busy, no problem. Second day, Jessica, no call. A week later, the buster never calls. <sighs> well, that's exactly what happens at a networking event, virtually or live. You meet somebody cool, you exchange business cards, we gonna follow up, we gonna connect, and nobody ever calls. Don't be that person. Right. So the, the book that I wrote, which by the way, VIPs who register for our event will get a copy of this book. It's called Networking is Not a One Night Stand for that very reason, because people treat those interactions like one night stands. You have a, a great connection. You think you're going somewhere and then nothing. So we let everybody put your right hand up. If you're not driving, put your right hand up in the air. Repeat after me. I will not treat networking like a one night stand. I need to hear you say I that. will not treat networking, treat networking like a as a one night, night stand. stand. There we go. That's important. We got to follow up. Thank you for that question, Kimberly. It's so important. <laughs> okay. Another question. Another. Thank you, Kimberly. 
What other challenges do you all have with networking? Go ahead, Jessica. I heard you unmute. I know you got something to ask. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm actually um, in the process of, of um, transferring my networking to my, my new business. So I'm hearing you talk about follow up and I'm very familiar with that because when I had my direct selling business and I was selling Leah Sophia jewelry, I mean, I bought, I went to the conference. I bought Belinda Ellsworth's uh, package and man on the train ride home. I wrote notes. I listened to all those CDs. I implemented her strategy and, and, and it worked. I mean, I was, I was killing it. I mean, I was top 10 in Canada and, and everything. Um, so I know about the follow up, but, but now that I'm starting this new business, I mean, it's so new and it's so different. I'm just starting to generate leads. And, and because everything is so digital right now, there, there's no personal connection. So it's kind of, it's a different territory and it's, it, it doesn't feel the same, you know? So I'm, I'm still trying to find my way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm getting these opt-ins, right? Like this is not the way I'm used to building relationships and networking. So. You know, I, I've got some Facebook ads that are that are going. I get opt-ins, but you know, the conversions aren't there yet, and I'm not connecting or following up with any of those opt-ins. They go into this email sequence, and it's just it's just foreign to me, you know. So I, I'm not really comfortable with it yet. So Jessica, do you mind sharing what it is that you do now? So. I have a full-time job, okay? I'm a commercial sales account executive with um, a telco internet company here in Canada. Um, but the business I'm starting, which I'm really passionate about, is um, leading women to debt freedom and by way of the debt-free journey, okay? So it's, it, it's really at the end of the day, Tish, it's about personal transformation because I went on this journey myself and I know from the time I started to the time I, I finished, I was not the same person and it's incredible the transformation that happens, but I'm not selling the transformation. I'm selling, you know, debt freedom. Right. right and right. so it's all about the debt free journey and I want to lead and support women to debt free land. That is what I want to do. And so I literally just started this business um, at the end of January. I started it. Um, and you know, I've got a funnel going, I've got some Facebook ads and I'm constantly being pulled in all these different directions. So may I and, interrupt and interject? Yeah. So Jessica is my new client out of Canada. Yay, Jessica. Yeah. And here's the deal. You gotta know where your your product, how your product is best marketed. Mm -hmm. And she chose to do digital marketing because she's working and she wants to, um, you know, post ads and have people opt in. And But honestly, Jessica, that's not the best way for the type of service you offer. You offer a very heart-connected service. And posting ads and getting strangers who have no connection to you and you none to them is not the best way. And she, I feel you. She joined my coaching because I'm wanting to get her out speaking. Now watch this. Watch this, Jessica. So Jessica's going to start speaking to drive leads to her business, which is the way she should do it for the type of business that she has because it's right. a per personal type of business. Diana out of Indianapolis owns a women's network. You show up here, Diana's on here. So now, and because I'm the host, I know that. So you can now connect to Diana. Diana, send her a private message and say, hey, we need to have a one-to-one because Diana runs networking organizations yeah. for women. Those are the people you need wow. to be connecting with yeah. because yeah. they, they can introduce you to their networks. And I couldn't you know agree with you more. Jessica, I, I feel also, very disconnected. 
I would also recommend that you, you know, definitely go and speak on other people's stages, connect with people who already have networks built. That's going to be a, a faster way for you to get connected to the people who need you the most. And I would also say, go and create some of your own networking events. I have a lady out of, oh, where is she? I think she's in Ohio. And she does what's called money circles. And she gets about five women together on a weekly basis. And you don't have to do it that frequently, but she does this. And because she knows that many times women have a hard time having conversations around money or they're dealing with debt issues, they are too embarrassed to talk about, yada, yada, yada. She creates these small money circles. And these women are now having tremendous breakthrough. And they're paying her a lot of money <laughs> to be able to be a part of it. The first one is free for them to kind of experience it. But in other words, go out and make those connections and draw up connections because you have a, a personal, I'm not gonna go talk to a stranger about my money issues. I'm just not gonna do it. I'm not gonna answer a funnel about it. I'm not, none of that. Um, so even if I get your information, it's just for me to go get free stuff. It's not for me to now join something necessarily. So like Tony said, go find the people who have already gathered your people and then go gather your own because you can, you can network in a very different way with the type of um, product service rather that you have to offer. And if I could offer, um, when you're saying you have a hard time connecting, I have found that Zoom, if you do a video, either Zoom or Google Hangouts or whatever, if you do a, a meeting person to person with video, I find that is a much better way to connect than just cold calling on the, or, you know, calling them on the phone. Um, so I would just like to offer that, you know, maybe if you even had those 15 minute strategy calls um, with those ladies to invite them then to the circle, then, you know, that could be a way to connect with them. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, that's a great question. Thank you, Jessica. We have a question in the um, chat from Howard. So Howard, um, thank you for coming, first of all. Um, we haven't talked in a few months, so I'm glad to yeah. see you here. He yeah. said, I find my greatest challenge with networking is to select events that are more strategic and focused to my target audience and ideal clients. That's the number one problem with networking. Mm -hmm. because people will go to events where their target is not, and then they wonder why it's not working. So the number one thing is you have to know who your target market is and speak their language so that it will attract them to you. So Tish, will you answer that, please? Yeah, I mean, the, the interesting thing, similar to what we said, Jessica, it's like sometimes people are gathering your audience for you and you're going to all the events that your friends are going to instead of finding those events and, fi and going directly to them. Um, Howard, I don't know if you have your microphone on or if you can speak and I know, Tony, you may know exactly what he does, but I'd love to know exactly um, what you do, but I'll give you a um, general answer in the meantime. Are you answering? Yeah, I, I can hear you. My, my mic is unmuted. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tish. Yes. So what, tell me what you do, Howard. So I do actually, uh, my services are very much about target marketing, actually. So I cater to small businesses that sell to other businesses, primarily. That's my primary focus. So I put together multi-channel targeted outbound marketing campaigns for companies that need help acquiring new clients in the B2B arena. Uh, so I use the traditional outbound channels, email, telemarketing, and direct mail. <clears throat> telemarketing at a very high level, it's, it's, it's a multi-channel approach. And so I need to be very strategic about where I'm nar you know, marketing, where I'm, <clears throat> where I'm networking. Right. And <clears throat> as Tony well knows, and she's commented, you know, many events are, you know, are not relevant and it's a lot of randomized, you know, who you meet by serendipity. And it's very yeah. random. So to pick organizations that attract audiences that are re relevant to my niche, which is small businesses, <clears throat> up to 50 employees that are technology, professional services, for the most part in the B2B arena, that's the kind of audiences that I need to be immersed in. So that's the big challenge for me. I'm going to give you one tip that when I heard this tip, Howard, it was game changing for my business. Um, so I'm going to show you this and you'll probably have to go and find out how to get it in your city. But 
This is called the book of lists. Can everybody see this? I call it the big book of lists because it's a huge book. But in the book of lists, they have lists of very specific, whether it's technology focused companies, whether it's companies that only employ up to 500 employees, up to 50 employees, um, they'll have women owned businesses, they'll have um, list of organizations that service certain types of clientele, it gets very specific. And so with the book of lists in most cities, it's going to be your business journal. Are you located in Houston, Howard, or where are you located? I'm in the DC metro area. Okay, so I would go and find out who publishes your business journal or go to your chamber and ask them who publishes the book of lists in your city because yeah, every city be has Washington Business Journal, but that's very interesting. I thought that was specific to the Washington Business Journal. You mean all journals around the country publish the book of lists? Yes. Most, yeah, most cities have a, a journal that does it. Some cities have their chambers who do it. And occasionally they will have like in El Paso, where I'm from in Texas, it was called the El Paso Inc. And they had the rights to publish it. So it depends. But every major city for sure has it. And some of the small cities do as well. Um, but it's all in how you use it. So frequently we'll have it, but we won't know how to use it. And I've done training on how to use the book of list to really identify which organizations are going to be gathering my ideal clients. And the book of list is just the one yearly publication. If you purchase in most cities, the actual journal, you can get the digital version, which means you can get all the lists that they put together, which means all the organizations, B2B organizations, um, nonprofit organizations. So all depending on specifically who you're looking for, that would be my first um, recommendation to go and get that strategic around who you're trying to locate because they've already gathered a lot of that um, you know, information for you. So Tish, thank you so very much for that suggestion. I, I, I'm familiar with the book of lists. The, the big challenge about that, as you would well know, is that the, the entries on that, the book of lists are, are d diluged with lots of telemarketing, lots of lead generation, mm -hmm. and they can become very hard to access because they get flooded with lots of contact in all channels. So how do you become more strategic with that and what other sources might you consider? May I may I respond? Right. Howard, who is your best client? They they pay you, they appreciate you, they use your service. Who is your best client? So the best client are are small growth oriented technology companies that really need help acquiring new customers. They're not getting enough referrals. They've they've been tapped out. Okay, They're so you just said something key. Wrong. You just said something key. Small technology companies. So when you are target marketing everybody, the narrower you can be, the better. So I coach Kittish to small business owners who are service-based primarily. If you sell purses and jewelry, you're not my target audience. Okay, service-based, small business, and even to get a little narrower, coaches, speakers, authors, trainers, financial professionals, realtors, though that's my target audience. You said IT. So have you, have you looked for the IT organizations in your area? Well, I actually do this with, for my clients, the targeting that you're describing. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of ways to do like going through InfoUSA and pulling up uh, raw leads that are with industry specific and targeting uh, within my geographic area, my criteria, those industries, companies of a certain size. So I'm certainly familiar with that. Um, but the I'm just, organizations that cater to them, like women in IT, African-Americans in IT, Hispanic in, in IT, so SimNet, SimNet is an IT national organization. So finding those organizations that cater to IT professionals is key. The well, other that's an interesting point. If I might just interject sure. one last point. So that's sure. a really interesting suggestion. What do you both think about targeting associations that serve our target audience. That's what how, we're how saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Exactly what we're saying. Right, right. Well, I wasn't to the organizations that right. wait serve those organizations that serve those people 
then you become a speaker. And I believe everybody can be trained to speak. Now, some of you, they say you'd rather be dead than speak. But <laughs> an educator, if you're passionate about what you do, you should be able to educate people. Then you go to them, Howard, and you don't just say, I want to meet all your people and they come do this. No, you go in as an educator and then when you educate them, they are attracted to you. Right, right. I understand. Well, associations is an underutilized resource probably for many of us. So I'd lo love your feedback about how to really uh, leverage associations. So thank yeah. you both so very much. I'm glad to be with you all tonight. You are welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. Great. And we have so much more to say. I know. So uh, Diana, Jessica put a, Jessica, Diana put a message, personal message to you um, in the chat. So make sure you open that up. And she suggested a vision board gathering for women who want to be financially free. There, there's a whole can of worms and that alone. We could talk to you all day, Jessica, about ideas. And Howard, you too, but it's just like, we have to learn, I believe, to get out of our traditional mindset around networking because I believe many times we think networking is the same thing over and over and over again, whereas if we are a little more creative with the way that we're thinking about it, such as what Tony, you know, we said earlier, finding the organizations that service your clients, creating your own networking events, small as they may be, you'd be surprised at how my, my entire business started by me starting these small networking events that I did every month. And then we got to where we were getting 50 people every month. Then we got to where we were getting closer to 90 people. You know what I mean? So, and, and now that's what we do for a living. So you can get more creative with the way you're networking and, and literally dump what you have in your brain about what networking is traditionally, because it's so much more than that. And it can be almost anything you want it to be based on what you're looking for and how you're looking to connect with your ideal clients. So I have a question. I have a lot of questions. So how does a referral network like NIA or BNI, I don't have a problem saying BNI because NIA is not everywhere, but how do groups like that play into networking for folks like us? So, and Kim, you can, you're welcome to add. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll just say for me, it's, it's, it's so specific. So I don't have to go out searching because all of the things we talked about, we all do it. We go find our ideal clients at different places. We, we create our own events. But if I go to a referral networking organization such as BNI, such as NIA or other things that are similar, I now have a group of people who are basically working on my behalf when I'm clear in who I'm looking for, when I am vocal about what I need and I'm connecting consistently um, engaged with the people in the group, I will get consistent referrals. I have a client, uh, a member in my group who just did an interview with me. And she said on the interview, Tony, she said, I got more business in the short time I've been in your NIA group than I've gotten all last year. So, I mean, but she's very vocal, very engaged, very, very clear on who are her ideal clients are. And so she's attracting those over and over and over again. Absolutely. So basically a, net, a referral networking group People are paying a membership, not only to receive, but to give, to listen to you, to build a relationship. Everybody heard of the good old boy network, right? <laughs> Everybody's heard of the good old boy network. Everybody mad at the good old boys because they pass business <laughs> between each other. But the referral group is your good old boy, in air quotes, network. Right. If you do it the right way, you are before COVID, going to events together, you're socializing, you're bringing your families together so that when the deal comes to the table, you know who you're going to share it with. Right. Everybody's mad at the good old boys, but they do it the right way because right. they build the relationship before the deal comes. So when the deal comes, it's no question who they're going to share it with. Yeah. So with a referral group like NIA, I'm helping my members to create that network that's an automatic. These are the people I'm going to share business with when the opportunity arises. So join a referral and it costs money. 
Yeah. Please don't don't keep going to free events. That's another. This is yes. another key. Yes. 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 You go to free events. You're going to get people with a free mindset, mm -hmm. and they are not going to want to buy anything, pay for anything, share anything. It's a free mentality. Yeah. And Tish and I will both tell you we have both invested very deeply Definitely. in our own coaching. Definitely. Yes. And it has exponentially grown our businesses because there's something about when God says you see enough in what you want to do to put some money behind it, put some energy behind it, put some time into it. All of a sudden doors start to open. Carol can tell you that Carol's coaching with me. And when Carol was coaching with me, she was struggling in her business. And now she's selling house after house after house. <laughs> because she's invested. Yeah. And this is the interesting thing. You might think, oh, I don't want to spend a hundred dollars to go to that event. I don't want to spend $50 mm -hmm. or whatever, but you're going to have other people in the room. If they're willing to spend a hundred dollars on the event, they're willing to spend a thousand dollars on the product. They're willing to spend a $10,000 on the service or the package. You know what I mean? So really think through that because the average person who's only going to free events is because they don't have the capacity to invest heavily and they're not going to invest with you and you're trying and you're going to spend all the follow-up work I just talked to you about. We just, and we just share it with you all. You're going to be following up behind people who don't have the ability to work with you. And so you have to start really thinking about where are you spending your time? And I love that question Howard had, you know, be strategic, not only with where you're going to go, but why. And you have to be willing to elevate your networking. And this is the reason I think, because I've been there, so I can say it with authority, you many times will not go to an event or not invest in the event because you don't see yourself as valuable, like Tony said. And so where we don't see ourselves as valuable, we're not, and we don't feel like we fit in. So I've been in rooms, I can honestly tell you, I've been in rooms with people who were multi six figure, seven figure earners, and I felt so out of place because I had not yet recognized my own value. Therefore, I didn't feel like I belonged. Therefore, when I had the opportunity to go back, I declined. Whereas when I got to that place of my mindset having been set free and changed, now I'm like, I belong in those rooms because I can make an offer to those people and I can offer value to them as well. That's so all that got. means you have to buy a ticket. Yep. And whenever you get a chance, you wanna buy at a VIP level because all the VIPs, there's usually a VIP only event and all the VIPs are playing at a higher level. And those are the people you want to be rubbing elbows with. And then you apply the strategies we've teaching you and you're with like-minded people. So Howard, if you're trying to get to people who are next level, you got to invest next level. Mm. And that's why Tish, she came to an event in Dallas. It cost $2,000 just to get to the event. I have to say, that's not hotel. That's not flight. That's not food. That's none of that. <laughs> that's registration. Yes. But right. you're in a room full of people who are paying and playing at that. It's a different mindset. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Um, Carol said, um, I was to told to join a Toastmaster club to help me get do speeches. Is this a good idea? Carol, do you have a fear of speaking in front of people? Florida kind of, Tony, but now since you've been coaching me, it's, I'm, I'm better at it now. Yeah. You remember when I first started? <laughs> yeah, I do remember. So Toastmasters, because other people have this question, Toastmasters is to help get the fear, get your legs under you you know, get a, get a, um, get your nerves out, all of that. Once that's done and you don't have a fear and you're passionate about what you do, you just need the right structure of your talk in order to get out there and give talks. And yes, you have to get out there and do it. I don't care how many Toastmasters you go to, nothing beats the, the live practicing. <laughs> Exactly. Or, um, but having the right structure, because there's mm -hmm. a formula to a talk that attracts your ideal client. It's not just getting out there and showing a PowerPoint and hoping to exactly. sign up. There's yeah. a format. So do you do you have any that you recommend, Tony? Because there's so many out there. Do you have we any Toastmaster Club? 
me and Tish. Tish I was going to say, well, that's some. Oh, the okay. Well, I'd rather pay you guys to do this. <laughs> so you know, you know. I got I, it. I got it. <laughs> oh, so, Tony. You know, I don't even think I've ever shared this story with you. But when I was starting to figure out how to speak, now mind you, I'm dating myself here because it's going to tell you how, how long ago <laughs> this was. I would put an ad in the newspaper. Okay, so that tells you how long ago. Ah. <laughs> Every week. And it was for, I would, I would rent, I didn't have to rent it because it was free, but I would get space at our local library and I would put a topic out there and say, I'm going to be talking, I'm going to be teaching this topic and whoever showed up, showed up. And sometimes it was two people and sometimes it was 30 people. But I did that every week for months, months, until I finally learned, oh, I could offer somebody to buy, you know, a package. That's how I started getting coaching clients, starting with speaking and then starting to make an offer. But the, the, the point I'm making is you have to do it. You can't, we can teach you all day long, but at some point you're going to have to stand in front of somebody and yeah. practice Take drastic <laughs> steps and do well, that. Well, but having coaching and having the right formula will, you won't have to do what Tish did and do all no. that free speaking up front because the, you know, we will give you the structure that you need. In fact, in our next crowd coaching, um, Carol, we're going to work on the structure of your talk. Okay. So um, okay. it's going to be awesome. Yeah. I have one more yeah. question and then we want to um, give you guys an opportunity. So Tish, yes. what about social media networking? Does that count as networking? If you do it well, only if you do it well. And I'm gonna tell you what is not well. Okay, everybody, eyes on me. I need to see the whites of your eyes because you gotta hear what I'm about to tell you. Do not, and this is said with all the love in the world, I promise you I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but you have to promise me that you will never again inbox a stranger and tell them to buy your stuff. Can I get, get, get Amen. Please. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Because that Amen. is not <laughs> social media networking. <laughs> that is stalking. That is behavior that's going to repel people and not attract them. However, what I love to do, and this is a simple, simple trick that's worked well for me for years now, is when I'm posting content consistently, by the way, I had this conversation today, I'm putting, putting videos out consistently. And the conversation I had today was a woman called me and said, I just watched your video last week of blah, 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 blah. And I think you'd be a great speaker for my next event. So I just booked two speaking events, by the way, because of my social media. So she was watching what I did consistently. So consistency is a sales strategy, number one. Number two, when I'm posting things consistently, I'm watching who's liking it consistently. So when I'm having people like they're constantly showing up or they always have a comment, now I have a reason to connect and say, hey, Diana, I want to thank you for being so engaged with my posts. I'd love to hear some feedback as to what it's speaking to you or what are you learning? Um, how could I be of assistance to you? And now I've started the conversation. I can now take it offline because believe it or not, social networking really happens offline. You want to get them onto a phone call, get them into your inbox, get them somewhere else as quickly as possible. But it really can make a difference. I've gotten lots of business online over the years. So I would like to share with you guys. Um, Jessica, where do you live? Yeah, so I'm right across from Detroit uh, in Windsor. Windsor, Canada. Yeah right, yeah, right across from Detroit. So uh, how do I get City. someone from another country to be a part of my networking group? I'm going to tell you the quick story, and I want you to hear what I'm saying loud and clear. So I'm a part of a Facebook group called Females in Finance. And in Females in Finance, this lady named Whitney posted her picture on the side of a bus. Excuse me? <laughs> uh, okay. But she posted it and it said Burlington, Ontario. Well, I was speaking in Canada two months from then. So I went to Google Maps and put in Burlington to Oakville. Turns out they're like neck and neck suburbs. Yeah. Okay. So I use my Bitmoji cartoon character to comment which makes me stand out. And um, I commented and she um, commented back. 
Okay, no problem. So two days later, she posts that, uh, that she's flying her airplane. Okay, who is this woman? She can afford to put her picture on this a bus and she owns an airplane? Oh my gosh. And I've always wanted to fly. And anytime I travel, I'm looking for people I can eat with. Breakfast mm -hmm. like I'd eat anyway. So I put my emoji in and said, Oh my God, you got your own airplane. And she, you know, she commented back, she's really wonderful. Then I went to Messenger. I messaged her. I'm saying, I'm gonna send you a private message. I sent her a private message and said, Hey, um, I see your post. I'm coming to Toronto from Texas in two months. I'd love to connect with you. She responded, yes, you're coming to Texas. What brings you here? I'm speaking at a women's conference. Oh my gosh, I have a women's group and I'm doing a nonprofit event, she says. I said, well, I can introduce you to the founder. I'm giving first. I'm, I can introduce you to the founder of the group I'm coming to speak to. So I made the connection between the two of them. Whitney set up a booth at this event, paid the woman that I met. Okay, I'm being a connector now. So Whitney was like, I can't believe you. You're amazing. So I said, let's get on Zoom. She said, what the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> I said, don't worry, I'm going to teach you. Got on Zoom. She and I talked an hour and a half. Instant connection. When I went two months later, she was at the conference. I helped her get her marketing collateral together. I, um, she flew me in her airplane all from a Facebook post because I didn't just say, oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now Whitney and I, uh, I'm in her group uh, as well. That's uh, how I met you, actually. Right. She's right? got her own Facebook group now. And that's yeah. and Jessica. And Jessica messaged yeah. me. I'm yeah. attracted to you. She said, this may be <laughs> weird, but I'm attracted to you. I said, it does sound weird. I don't go that route. She said, <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's great. I love when that happens. Let's do a one-to-one -one on Zoom. She came on my Zoom. We had a 30-minute conversation, connection. I didn't sell her anything. She kept paying attention. And then, long story short, she's now in my coaching program. Because it started with Whitney. Whitney brought me back to be the closing keynote speaker at her event in November, paid for it, all that. And now I'm back as the closing keynote speaker and MC for her event. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's going to be great. Start, start oh, Facebook post. So I'm always implementing uh, new things. Um, last month, I pushed myself out of my comfort zone to go live Monday to Friday on my biz page for brand awareness to uh, get more comfortable putting myself out there. This month, uh, what I'm doing is I found three groups that potentially have my ideal clients in them. And so what I was uh, taught to do was to um, post some valuable information, not selling anything, just tips, tricks, mm -hmm. myths, whatever, right? So I'm going in these three groups, Monday to Friday, posting valuable uh, information um, with, the, with the hopes that people are going to be curious about, oh, who is this person who's mm -hmm. posting all this information, right? Um, and it's interesting as we're going along, what I'm kind of figuring out you know, where my people are, where they're not. Um, and that's, that's what I'm doing right now, but it's just uh, networking through social media is very different than what I'm used to. I was a member of BNI, um, I, I, lots of networking groups here in the city where I live. Um, and I was always part of them with, you know, my other job. And so I'm very comfortable with the one-to-one. -one. Um, but this social media networking is just, uh, it's just, it's very different. And I, I feel like there's a, there's a void of that, that connection, which I am so, um, I'm just so fond of, you know? Well, then we're, we're going to turn that around because yeah. connection is everything. Turn it around. You don't have to do the Facebook posting, trying to generate 
strangers to come love you because people will love you instantly. Plus, I'm spending so much money. Plus, oh, plus it's spending nuts. so much money. Quick, you, stop. But, but you know how much money I've spent on social media getting clients? Almost zero. Almost zero. Almost zero. I think I probably had a... Um, event, I mean, where I was running ads for an event at one point, but I've never spent money on ads just to get people. And, I've and I have, money. I have, and it was money down the tubes. Relationships, yeah. so we can for the business you you're in, yeah. relationships are everything. Right. I believe that. Right. I really everything. do. Everything. Yeah. So, well, we want to invite you to our conference, October 23rd and 24th, the Unstoppable drastic action conference and it is october 23rd and 24th virtual let me tell you the first vip ticket i sold was whitney who by the way wait, makes 1.6 million dollars i'm sure she wanted to share <laughs> and she will tell you because she was in the do? homeless shelter she was in the homeless shelter she now supports so she is proud to tell you how much money she makes so if you long. want to pay, play with people at that level, you got to pay at that level. Right. She was my first registration. So we these are our sponsors, and we're looking for a few more sponsors. If you missed our meeting last week, um, check out the, the um, email follow-up. I'm going to send out the video is there. But sponsorship is another great way to get in front of your target audience. But the conference is about how to learn to magnetically attract more clients without cold calling and sleazy sales tax tactics. So if you hate cold calling, we teach you how to build relationships that turn your contacts to contracts. It's a two day, it's actually two and a half day if you do VIP because we're having a PJs and profits party the night before. <laughs> so PJs and profits party for all the VIPs. So we have a general admission, which is two full days of digital content and live speakers on our virtual platform, virtual pre-event networking, which is the PJs. Um, I'm sorry, it's a pre-event networking, so it's not the PJs. It's a, we give you a digital workbook. You're going to get a physical box, a gift box with all of our stuff in it. Um, and then you get the unstoppable, unstoppable digital action program. And then you get access to exclusive skill building breakout sessions. Okay. 197 is VIP. And it's a whole longer list, two full days of content virtual pre-event networking, the digital workbook, all of that, the box, exclusive skill building breakout session. You get an autograph book from me, autograph book from Tish, the PJs and Profit event networking party, the pre-event group training session with Tish and Tony, and you get to bring a friend for 60 bucks. So if you use promo code, you can use Tish, or Tony, um, you'll get $50 off of these numbers. So we make it super affordable for you to show up virtually, get connected to our community, and it's going to be amazing. And then you can bring a friend for $60, someone who can hold you accountable for the things that you learned, hold each other accountable. And so the, the friend promo code is VIP friend. VIP friend is the friend co promo code. And then Tony or Tish to take $50 off this ticket. So open your calendars now. Look at the dates. October 22nd through 24th. 22nd is the VIP event. If you are available short of somebody's getting married, we can't project anybody dying. So somebody's getting married. Anything else, you can move off your calendar and be there. Because we are going to put, we are putting together a program, not only for the content, but for the connections. Yes. One of the things that makes us unique as coaches is our connections. We are always making introductions 
so that I always say, I want my clients to get their money back through my connections and introductions. And we both have international networks. Yes. So don't delay, unstoppabledrasticaction.com. If you think you might want to be a sponsor, sponsorship's a whole nother level of playing. We only have one speaking sponsor open, $1,250. But you get the entire registration list, plus you get 30 minutes to speak in front of your target audience. 500 word article, full page ad in the virtual program. You get to put your swag in the box. Um, there's a lot of benefits to the Drastic Action sponsor, $1,250. I had a client today tell me she paid $1,500. I said, how long is your speaking spot? She said, I don't have one. Are you kidding? Oh, wow. You wow. didn't ask permission to do that before you did it. <laughs> <laughs> so $1,250 gets you us saying your name. And oh. there is nothing better than having the host say your name and endorse you. That's why sponsorship is so good because the host endorse you. And if they trusted the host enough to come to the event, they're gonna trust your endorsement. Absolutely. And then the unstoppable sponsor is 750. It's a three minute introduction. You get a Zoom room Friday only. Um, that means that in exhibitor time, people can come to your room and talk to you one-to-one. -one. You're gonna get your own Zoom room. And then um, with the Drastic Action Sponsor, you have a Zoom room the entire conference. So don't know where you want to play with us, um, but we suggest you start somewhere. Um, and if you're ready for that next level for the sponsorship, that'd be great. But at the very least, Carol was my second registration at VIP. So Carol's already in. As a VIP, Carol is showing up and playing at a whole nother level, and I love her for that. Yeah. Tony? Yes. What's the time on the 23rd and the 24th? I thought it was from 8 to 5 on the 23rd and 5 to... No, it's 8 uh, Pacific time, so it's 10 mm -hmm. our time. Remember, Tish is in Pacific, so we had to push it a little bit later. 10 to, 10 to what, hun? Uh, let me go look and see. What is it? Ten to four. Your ten to six. Our time. Okay. And then set. And then the twenty third. Twenty third is ten to three. Our time. Ten to Eight three. To okay. One, our time. So. Okay. Thank and you. And if you want to know for sure, click on attend our event and the schedule. A, a basic schedule is there. I thought it was in on. The, I thought it was in September. It's in October. It's October. Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, then I made a mistake. And we, we planned it in October because it's just in time for upcoming year. Yeah. Where you're going to put your stuff in place. So yeah. the upcoming year, you'll be ready. Oh, okay. I know what it was. I have another conference that day too, but on September. But September 24th. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're so glad you all spent some time with us. I hope you got some good nuggets. I know you did. I hope that you will implement them. And um, if you have questions and you want more information about some benefits of sponsorship, reach out to one of us and we can definitely um, answer those questions for you. All of our information is in the contact or the chat box rather. And we one last tip, one last tip. When you do virtual networking, open your chat. And yes. if you're on a computer, the three dots in the bottom right hand corner where you would normally type your message, you click there and you click save chat. So you'll have all the information. And you'll have all the contact information for everyone oh. who showed up. And then if you didn't get a chance to message them privately, you could send them a text. In the morning, you say, hey, last night we were on with Tish and Tony. I saw you were in there. Would you be open to doing a one-to-one -one so we can get to know each other and how we can help each other? Not so I can sell you my program yes, or sell you my stuff. Relationship first. Yes. Relationship first. So always save the chat. How do you do that again, Tony? I'm sorry. Well, you're on an <laughs> iPad, honey, and I don't think you can do it on the iPad. Oh, oh. yeah. Okay. But if you make friends with somebody here, you can ask them to send it to you. So I'll, I'll send <laughs> yeah. it to you guys. Okay. I'll You'll send, send it to me? You. Yeah. Okay. I'll Thank you. It.
You're welcome. That's I'm trying to get some of my friends. You can show up on a computer, show up on a computer because your options aren't limited like they are on a device. What hey, you know what I just what, found? What you, your... what you find? In the three little dots? You what? If you go into meeting settings, there's a setting that says, touch up my appearance. Yes. <laughs> that is, that, <laughs> Where is that? that one's golden. <laughs> touch up my appearance. It's you not on iPad though, right? Smooth everything on out. <laughs> Diana, did you put your information in here, Diana? I put the, I put the email in there. Okay, perfect. I want to follow up with you. I'm Indiana Wonder Woman. Yay. Yes, I remember. All right, y'all. We want to end on time. So good night. Thank you. Thank you. Stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Thank can, you. I, can I talk to you a little if for, for a little bit when I I'm, I can call you from the car, Tony. I got to run out. Okay. All right. I forgot you're two hours behind me. It ain't dinner time for you. No. <laughs> See you later.